good morning and happy Wednesday to all of you. In today's video, I'm showing you guys a little fridge and freezer tour, maybe a little kitchen and house tour, MTV Cribs. And yeah, if you are following along with the Strong Sisters training program, you will see on the program that today is an off day. So we will be prioritizing getting our steps in for recovery. And since we are starting our cut, not gonna skimp on the steps. We gonna get 12,000 today for sure. So it will probably be raining later and we're gonna be sitting down in the afternoon for a long period of time with some meetings. So we're gonna actually start our morning off at the gym to just make sure that we get some steps in, good brain working, get that blood flow going. But even before then, I'm just gonna whip up a really quick duck offal stew. This is duck month, so we're trying to use a lot of duck products throughout the week. So let's see what's in this stew. All right, here we have all of the duck odd parts, the duck offals. So let's start, here's some duck liver. We've got a duck heart, a duck head, which is gonna have the brain and the eyeballs in there. Duck gizzards, which are pretty tough so they require a low and slow cooking to be able to chew through all this connective tissue. And then we've got some three duck necks. It's gonna be a good day. So the bones in the duck necks, in order to chew through them to get some calcium, they require low and slow cooking. So I'm gonna throw these in there. And last but not least, some duck, duck feet. Feeties. Look at these webs. I could honestly stand here and play with these all day. <laughs> Nonetheless, they're going into Pam because Pam a van. drives a van. And with the van. We also have the something for like air tube. I don't know, but it is rather satisfying on the fingers to play with these things. If you are someone though that like really struggles with eating these parts because they look funny or you're used to thinking of them inside the actual animal, my dad always keeps saying this, that like he has a hard time thinking of even eating like beef brain or chicken feet because it's a foot or it looks funny. Maybe don't play with them. Maybe just have someone else prepare them or prepare them in something where it's going to mask the flavor. Like put them in eggs or something like that. So, or like a stew and yeah, like chop them into really small pieces. So you and you see. won't even know. So, where we get our duck from is ba -bang. White Oak Pastures. Yes, she is spilling all over the place. I currently am spilling. It's really hard to find high quality duck unless you just like go to a pond and get your own duck. But then, like, what was that duck? Eating. Thank you, Marshmallow. Cleaning. Thank you. Ms. Thank you, Marshmallow. So we, since we know White Oak Pastures practices, we're posting a video this week talking all about their zero waste policy. That's where we get our duck from. You can use code sis code strong sisters if you do happen to support White Oak Pastures. Code strong sisters at checkout to let them know who sent you. And also, if you are not yet subscribed to our newsletter, if you subscribe, every single week we send out a deal that they're having so you can get 15% off using our other top secret discount code which you'll get when you subscribe so hang out with us there too okay all right dog walk then gym for more walking and then getting to work let's go just got back from the gym to get some steps in and I got approached by another person today. Apparently, I have a very approachable face. Something like says, like, come talk to me. <laughs> Not many people come talk to me. No. I think I have RBF. But very interesting. So I told you guys about Jeremiah. Jeremiah is a bullfrog, the friend that I met a few weeks back. Well, he addressed me today and said the ultimate compliment. He said, it looks like you eat a very healthy diet. And I said, yes, indeed. I do not eat vegetables. And he said, oh, I would have assumed you just stuffed yourself with vegetables. And I just said, no, I eat all meat. And then I just like left it at that. So, <laughs> So story one and then story two, someone actually did come up to me today and I haven't told Sarah yet. So I was walking on the treadmill. Story time. I was walking on the treadmill and someone comes up and says, is your sister dating someone? No. <laughs> and I was like, yeah. 
Um, yeah, so, yeah. And he goes, <laughs> you always just have to say, yeah. I just said, yeah. And yep. he goes, oh man, okay, well, you know, like, I don't really hit on anyone at the gym. And I just, you know, I had to inquire. And I said, yeah, you know, if I was a man, I understand, oh, okay? I understand. Um, and Tip for you ladies at the gym, always say yeah. Yeah, just always. It's always a yes. And the best part about it is he's 41. Oh, I know who you're talking about now. <laughs> All right, time to tune in to our favorite show. Let's go. the next edition of MTV Cribs, Fridge and Freezer. Let's get going. All right, so first order of business, we have two kitchens, an upstairs kitchen and a downstairs kitchen. So we are in the upstairs kitchen and we have fridge number one. Fridge number uno. So what do we have in here? Bottom shelf. We are just going to ignore all of this. This is an exciting project that we have coming up soon. Y'all will understand soon, but just look at it for now. Just look at it. All right, top shelf, we have some bone broth and some rendered fat from the confit that we made the other day. And then I'm getting ready for tomorrow's bone broth batch. So I've got some duck heads, some duck feet, and some duck necks thawing out for the bone broth batch. And that's pretty much all we have in this fridge. Now shall we check out the freezer? Let's do it. All right, the freezer. This is our nose to tail freezer. So, let's see what we have in here. This is all the stuff from our full cow. We got some spleen, okay? Some beef cheek meat. Then we just have a lot of beef kidney. Lots of the beef kidney. And lots of the beef liver. Lots of the beef liver. So that's that shelf. What is this? Oh, this is a beef heart. We got some beef heart and this here, what is this? Oh, chicken skin. Sometimes when we put things in glass Tupperware, it just becomes an unknown. Yeah. So we just thaw it out and we figure it out then. Chicken skin and some chicken liver. Yum. <laughs> All right, top shelf here. We've got some pig skin. Okay. Some more beef heart. That should have been down here. Oh my gosh. I'm oh so my gosh, it's embarrassing. Some beef sweet bread. That's pretty tasty right there. Guys, the way she's looking through her glasses, we can't. We got some beef oxtail. And then we've got some more duck off, cart, off, cut, off cuts, duck liver. Some more duck necks. I'm trying to have some duck necks. Um, some remaining chicken heads from our poultry month of January. And then some more duck feet and duck heads for more bone broth batches in the future. Ba, 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 so ba, 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 wait, what's on this shelf? Oh, we got one here. So we have some lamb liver from a local farm. Then some more beef oxtail from White Oak Pastures. Yep, beef oxtail, another beef oxtail. And then something that we haven't explored yet, but we really need to thaw it out. Really need to thaw it out. Is beef feet. So, you know what? This is going to be part of next week's Alright, take it out. Feast. No, no, no. Too many, too many days from now. But in a few days, we'll be... What? Why'd you stop talking? You, you rolled your eyes at me. I'll just be rolling my eyes at you. We'll thaw this out in a few days. <laughs> Whenever she just turns me down, I just roll my eyes. And then some ground beef from our full cow. Because <laughs> no one really like ground beef. <laughs> Stuff in here, okay? Nose to tail freezer complete. Basically a mishmash of an entire animal is in here. So now, we're heading downstairs to the... Downstairs. Freezer. <laughs> with this 
<laughs> I call I call this the BC shelf before carnivore. Okay, so we keep a random assortment because we hoard things of primal kitchen dressing. If you are still keto, primal kitchen dressing. <laughs> Then, you know, just a lot of steak sauce stuff. We keep these for our parents in case they come into town and say, I want the sauce. Then, as you saw at the grocery store the other day, we took all of the Gerolsteiner. Huh. Sorry. The Gerolsteiner sparkling water. All right, now come down here, close with me. So this is something new that we've been doing and it's a really good idea. So when we thaw things out, you know, if you just put it on the shelf, it's gonna lick with juice, like, it's gonna leak. Make a mess. So we just put this little baking pan in here and I say, Pastor Duck, I want this tomorrow. Thought put out. Put it on there, okay? So then, thawing out some raw beef suet. We like to age our suet a few days. It has a nice consistency that way. What are some other things that we thought out? Let's see. So we've got some more duck skin. We'll make some chips with it. Yum. Beef brain. We'll be talking with you guys about this later. Uh -huh. And some duck liver, okay? So this is what we have thought out. What else do we have on this shelf? Well, our dogs are carnivore too. I have a question. Yeah. How soon do you thaw things out from the freezer to That's the fridge? That's a great question. I should have, I should have addressed it, but if you want it, so let's say it's Friday, like you want to eat it on Friday, I'd suggest thawing it out on Wednesday morning. What day is it today? Oh. I don't know because we filmed things a few days in advance. I see, I see. Okay, so, so two days Friday, in advance? Thaw it out Wednesday morning, put it in the If fridge. it's a big item? You know, you may want to do Tuesday. What if it's a small item? Small item, Wednesday's fine. Like a steak. What about Thursday? No, it's too soon. You're cutting it too close. Okay. Anyways. If it's like a really thin steak, though? I say no, I say I say Wednesday. Like, why, why not? Okay, that's okay. fair. What else is on this shelf? Our dogs are carnivore too, so we have a full video about this, but this is where we thaw their stuff out. Theirs requires a few more days in advance. Like, if I want to feed them on Friday, I gotta thaw this out on, like, Monday. Mm -hmm. Okay? Good practices. Keep that on the bottom shelf. Yep. Don't put stuff underneath that. Alright, so we move up one shelf, and this is, like, leftovers, right? So this is what we're gonna be eating today. We've got some leftovers from our nose to tail feast the other day. Yeah, like this is some, um, what is this? Duck leg quarters. Duck leg quarters? Let's open that up. Let's take a second for the duck leg quarters. Duck leg quarters with a lot of skin. Yeah. All right. Okay. Second over. And then that's our quiche that we made. And then we've got some remaining skirts they got. And then last but not least, the beautiful juicy brisket from the other day. You think you may want to give this a moment of silence? Okay, moment of silence starting now. Okay. That was okay. Why do you put it in glass Tupperware? Because uh, I don't want the plastic xenoestrogens, okay? No right. xenoestrogens. So, and the final shelf is like eggs, okay? So, pastured local eggs and then glass containers that we put the egg whites in when we just eat the yolks. What do you do with the egg whites? You know, we're going to do a full video on what we do with those, so stay tuned. All right, I forgot. One more, one more little shelf here. This is where we keep our butter. So, we've got some Vital Farms pasture-raised butter, but hey, if you're dairy-free, it's okay. There's a new solution, okay? So White Oak Pastures has this Tallow Be Thy Name product, dairy-free butter-like spread. It works wonderfully. We'll show it. We're going to cook our meat in it later today. Do you have a code? Use Strong Sisters at checkout, okay? White Oak Pastures? At White Oak Pastures checkout. Where, 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 where's the raw dairy? That's coming soon, so stay tuned. Would you prefer raw or pasteurized? I would dairy? prefer raw. Okay. Same. Now, what's in this freezer? You know? Oh, man. Okay, we didn't organize this one. <laughs> so, we got some pork jowl. Our friends from Jake Country Meats, a great, great, he is pork, Jake is pork king. Jake is in Southwest, Southwest Michigan. Michigan. If Check you're in Southwest out. Michigan, would go with Jake's Country Meats to find high quality pork. Check him out. All right, then we've got some turkey necks, okay? Shouldn't that be upstairs? Yeah, we're a little bit unorganized down here. This is part of that project. So don't ask questions about it yet, okay? Then we've got some Iberico pork products from White Oak Pastures. So What's Iberico pork? Iberico pork, these are some special breed of hogs and they are really fatty and they eat a diet that's high in omega-9, so therefore their meat and their fat is high in omega-9s. Very good tasting. 
So we got some Iberico pork products. Where do you get that? White oak pastures. Then we've got this, ugh, this is unorganized. Some chicken cages from white oak pastures. This is great for broth. And then we've got two whole chickens, two full chickens that we'll be using again soon. So this is kind of a, just a mish, miscellaneous. Oh, and then we have some carnivore ice cream that we made a few months ago. I'm using that raw dairy. So we're using that raw dairy, so we'll, we'll film a full video of how we made it, okay? Okay. Okay. All right, that about wraps up this freezer. What's over here? What? What's over here? So we already, we already told y'all that we sometimes, sometimes have some Rebel Creamery ice cream, so there's some Rebel. But then, what else do we have up here? Oh, speaking of making your own dairy, we have some starter, uh, what are these called? Starter, starter cultures. Starter cultures. We got these from New England Cheese Making Co. So if you're curious, this Yo-Cult was just a basic one that we used to make our own Greek-style yogurt with oh. raw goat's milk. It was great. Here's we have a recipe for the raw goat's milk yogurt on our Instagram. I'll link in the description below. Here's the yogurt. We should probably thought this out. Oh, we actually did. We froze it and saved it. Yeah. And then we've got some a pigtail, Iberico pigtail. And then some more chicken skin. And then all those little suet chunks we save and we use these to like sear up steaks. So we'll just toss a few of these little bits onto the onto the cast iron when we sear in steaks. Yes. Okay. So that about wraps up downstairs fridge. Now our freezers have like these two have become a collection of items that we've gathered over the past year. Yep. And we hoard them. Yep. But we will get to them all. Uh, speaking of hoarding, so now we are headed to, we have three more meat freezers. So these are like large meat freezers um, that we have to have for our full cow. So if you want to get a full cow, you need a lot of storage space. So let's go check them out, okay? All right, freezer number one. If you are looking for a meat freezer, would definitely suggest a stand-up one. We prefer this a lot better because you can like pull and access from it much easier. So let's check it out. All right, so we have a lot of our cuts from the full cow organized. So we've got the roasts, the rump roasts. We've got the ribeyes that we are absolutely going to hoard until the end because they're the best. You will not they see us eating ribeyes for several months. And we've got a ton of round steak because a full cow comes with a lot of round steak. So we've been eating a lot of round. Then we've got the sirloins that Miss Marshmallow ate the other day. Not okay, not okay. Sirloins. What Not okay. What do we have here? We've got the skirt steaks. A, a true favorite of ours is so Skirt good. and flap. That so big good. boy is a flap, flap. steak. Not Very really similar sure. to skirt steak. Yes. Um, let's continue with all the steak cuts and then I'll get into all the fat. Okay. So then we've got flank steaks that Sarah has hoarded. This was her birthday gift, summer 2019. I will not and be opening them for a these. while. <laughs> it makes me nervous. There's only three. So then we've got the tenderloin steaks from our full cow. These are a real treat, filet mignon. Probably will not be eating these for months. And speaking of hoarding, um, Patan, Patan twirling team, we need to update you guys. We have a Patan twirling team. want to join you must have a tomahawk steak from white oak pastures what is a tomahawk steak what is a patan you know it's a great question so this is a bone in ribeye and it is absolutely 2c 3c thick very good stuff we're clearly hoarding it but basically you need to show us your moves get some tomahawk steaks and then we'll consider pastures. letting you join though yeah. it's yeah. A, it's up for debate yep okay so that pretty much covers all of our cuts now we have a lot of fat Okay, like a lot of fat. So let's start down here. So a lot of marrow bones from our full cow. So you can see all these. These are marrow bones. So we like to get the This the is the cross cut. The cross cut. We like to get the raw bone marrow. Would recommend these. the canoe cut. 
to get yeah. Maro out easier, okay. which is down here. So these are the Kanuka. These are from White Oak Pastures. And so, so see how they're split in half? Yes, you can Indeed. easily scoop the Maro out of these. Indeed. So we've got all those down there. All right, next, we've got a lot of pork fat from White Oak Pastures as well. So all of this, and this is some beef fat. And then this shelf here is some more pork fat. Would you buy pork, pack f pork fat from just anywhere? No, I would definitely suggest one that does like pastured poultry or pastured um, pork hogs. hogs. For sure. Okay. White Oak Pastures. Next shelf here is just a lot of beef suet. So like a lot, this is all beef suet. And I just, it's, it's so beautiful. It's so beautiful. So you will know if your cow was grass fed and finished by the color of the suet. If it's got a little bit of like this pink yellow, that's the good stuff. That's the good stuff. Like, you know how they say them carrots? No. Pink yellow suet. Exactly. Okay. And that pretty much is this. Oh. More pork okay, fat. Okay, so this is some more pork fat, but this is the special pork fat. Oh my <laughs> So this is Iberico pork fat. So this comes from those Iberico hogs. This fat is truly special. You gotta taste it. It's like a sweet olive oil. So if you don't like the chewy consistency oh, suet. of suet, I would recommend trying the Iberico pork fat for yes. a raw fat source. Yes. You will not be left with that chewiness. It is much more like silky and smooth in your mouth. Yeah, a lot softer too. And it has a really unique and beautiful taste. Try. She's right. getting really serious when we're talking about this yes. now. Yeah, it's truly something special. All right, so that pretty much wraps up this freezer. What's right? this freezer's name? Ferdinand. Ferdinand. Okay, now we've got a chest freezer. So these are a little bit harder to deal with because everything's like hidden. Okay, so yeah. we open this up. Boop. And some more stuff for that project that we're working on. So just ignore these big things, okay? more of these big things but what else do we have in here so this is this is our bone box this box here so we save all of those marrow bones that we pull the the raw bone marrow out of and we save these for bone broth patches so we've got a ton of bones in here we also have some just like beef soup bones from white oak pastures and some more Marrow bones from White Oak Pastures. So, so when it comes to your bones, either save them for a broth or you can give them to your dog. Yes, yes. We like to give our dogs the straighter bones, like these, that come from chuck steaks. They it's get like down and dirty, would it? It's a great toy to keep them entertained for a while. What else do we have? So in addition, back here, we've got a, a lot more duck since d February is our duck month. So we've got duck leg quarters, beautiful. We've got some full ducks down there. Let me pull one out. So you can buy a full duck from White Oak Pastures and these are high quality pasture duck. I'm so excited, the skin is so good. And then we've also got some more of the cuts from our full cow. So this is a big old beef, another beef brisket. We've got, I know what's down there. Short ribs. I organized it. Short ribs, brisket, and then can you move all this? Oh yeah, oh, okay. Okay, this is our pile and pile and pile of chuck roast. So if you watched our full cow video, you'll know that we were able to switch out a lot of the ground beef from our full cow with chuck roast. So if you're wondering why we eat so much chuck, it's because we have a ton of chuck. Yes. And the final freezer is upstairs, uh, outside in our garage. Come, come. Don't mind me, just getting some hormesis in. Okay. Okay. All right, so this is our dog meat freezer. So this is where we keep all of our raw dog food for the kiddos. We're clearly running low, but that's okay because our next shipment is coming in soon. But if you want to save money on like raw carnivore diet, we always suggest buying in bulk. So that's why we buy in bulk and we have a freezer 
to put all this Just for the babes. In. Just for the babies. Just for you, Marcy. You eat my muff on sirloin, you looking ass. Okay, that about wraps up this tour, this MTV Cribs fridge and freezer edition. On a serious note, it's really cool that we are able to just shop out of our own fridge and freezers. And we do that so that way we can buy from local farmers or buy from White Oak Pastures who are helping with the climate crisis and are doing regenerative agriculture responsibly. Yes, and we, we never, ever, ever buy conventional beef. Yeah, we don't. So we don't have to go to like Meyer or... Uh, Costco and buy conventional meat there like we don't have to go to the grocery store like the grocery store is not where we get our meat we buy from local farmers to support them this is something we're incredibly passionate about very passionate about and so you'll never really see us going to the grocery store to buy those things we can just pull from our meat freezers and we save a lot of money buying in bulk and buying directly from the local farmer instead of having to go to the grocery stores every week and buy things on sale yes so a lot of people question, and I've got a question for you. Isn't it way more expensive to eat grass-fed meat? Uh, yeah, but you have to ask yourself why, right? What's the so, hidden costs? So why is conventional meat less expensive? Exactly. But we'll put a link to our full cow video. This is how we have found it to be the most sustainable. I think that you can buy 100% grass-fed and finished beef. Without breaking without the bank. Without breaking the bank. We were able to, like the full cow cost analysis broke down to $55 a week of groceries for both of us. And then factoring in eggs, it's about 65. So about $65 a week. And yes, it requires like an upfront cost of buying the full cow, but we saved up for that. And then over time we saved a ton of money. Yep. I would, I would think that it would be pretty hard to do a $65 carnivore diet at the grocery store per week, but okay. Sorry, I got distracted. Thanks for tuning in guys. Until next time behave like the angels that you are, okay? <laughs>